What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode 15 of the Wealth Journey series. I have a finance update for you today. Just going over my income, expenses, and saving. We're going to jump right into it right now. So I'll put this on the screen for you, but my income at the end of September ended up coming out to $8,167 flat. I haven't seen that in a very long time. So that I guess that was pretty cool to see. Plus it was more than what I typically bring in as you might've seen. My, my pay tends to fluctuate depending on how business is going, depending on how you know things are going at work, I might get a bonus and things like that happen. But yes, this is a little atypical for me. This is a little more than what I normally earn. So I'm pretty excited about that. And by the way, I am using that Empower app that I was telling you about in my last video to track everything. And it's been a lot easier to manage my finance is just by doing it digitally and by it doing it automatically and I can check it on a daily basis or even weekly basis. So if you haven't tried something like this, I definitely recommend trying it. I do have a link in the description for you and it's free, 100% free. Anyway, the total amount that I ended up spending on my expenses was $6,961.53. And honestly, I earned a little more this month. So I spent a little more this month and I have some positive news to report today. So even though I showed you just now the total that I spent on all my expenses, you already know I'm gonna break this whole thing down for you. So what I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna record my screen and we're gonna go through this Empower app aka personal capital so as we can see right here there's this little circle and it has a sixty nine hundred sixty one dollars and fifty three cents that i spent uh for this month i budgeted seven thousand dollars because for whatever reason i keep going over my original budget which makes me think i need to reassess some things i could go for that fifty eight hundred eighty six dollars that i normally budget every single month but honestly i just don't want to and frankly I'm still able to invest what I want to invest and save what I want to save. So I haven't like felt an inherent need to really stick to that. So I just upped my budget. Y'all can criticize me in the comments for that. Y'all be coming from me in these comments lately. I don't understand it. But anyway, um, if we're looking at the entire expenses right now, if we're looking at the screen, most of that did go towards giving. Now, people always think that I'm just like throwing money like to people is crazy. Look, here's the thing. I am a church man. You know what I'm saying? I give back to my church. Church has been a deep rooted thing in my life ever since I was a baby. I will continue to be that way. In my religion, Christianity, I am big on tithing. That's 10% of your income. Obviously, this is more than 10% of my income, but I feel that the impact that church and God has had on my life, I feel like I can do more than 10%. So I do more than 10%. And I give my mom some money every single month too, because I feel like everything she's done in my life, she is more than deserving of the money that I give her. I wish I could give her more. So before you come for me in the comments talking about I can't afford to give this much, what do you mean I can't afford it? My net worth is going up every single month. I'm able to save more and invest more every single month. And since this is something that I can control, if I ever feel like I need to dial back, I can always dial back. So yeah, I don't really have anything planned for this video. I'm just kind of speaking my mind today because I've been seeing some of these comments. Some of these get about outrageous. Talking about something, if, if you know budgeting, you know you can't afford it. Okay, when you can't afford something, you're literally like taking out loans and going into debt just to do something. I'm not doing that. Anyway, moving on. Uh, I like the way this breaks things down. You can actually make your own categories, but rent was the second biggest thing, $1,807. That's just what it came out to this month. Groceries came in third. Ah, catch that real quick groceries came in third. That means I didn't spend a fortune on DoorDash because my, my groceries ended up being only $532.55. So I would say I did about good in the month of September, but it was also because I have this app and I'm able to really manage what I'm doing very easily with this. My business expenses have gone up. That's another reason why I've decided to raise my budget. Uh, it's not just because I really like comfort and leisure and, and things like that. You might've thought that by what I said earlier in the video. I mainly said that to get engagement in the comments to be perfectly honest with you, just to see who's gonna be quick to comment as opposed to actually watching the full video and understanding where I'm coming from when I say these things. But I want to scale my business and grow my business. So y'all know I have a website. Y'all know I have an email automation process. Y'all know I have products that I'm selling and I'm hyper-focusing on one particular product right now and I'm creating it right now. It's my wealth building course. I also have Zoom, but I also invested in the courses that can help me become a better businessman and help me build 
better products and better things that add more value to you guys and girls. And if y'all know anything about me, you know that most of my time that I spend in life, like outside of work and all that aside, most of the time I spend is spent becoming a better man. So I'm working on exercising and cardio, lifting weights, fighting because I really like fighting and being able to defend myself and, and the people that I care about. So I do Muay Thai, but outside of all of that, I'm also working to create even more income for myself. And I spent quite a bit of time learning how to invest to create even more income from where I put my money into and eating the right things and getting the proper amount of sleep. Like all the time that I spend and all the money that I spend at the young age that I am right now of 29, and this is pretty much what I've dedicated my whole 20s to, I've dedicated this to getting better at my career, becoming a better professional, becoming a better man, becoming a stronger man, becoming a faster man. All these things have turned me into a very well-rounded person. So I don't mind increasing my budget to buy healthier food or to work out at better gyms, to get better quality workouts and get one-on-one -on -one private training. I don't mind spending extra money on courses to make me smarter at business and better at business. If that means I'm gonna spend more money on books within my budget to become better, I'm gonna 100% do it. So I say all that to say I spent $480.27 on business expenses. Some of that was courses, some of that was website-based stuff. And I'll jump into exactly specifically what I, what I invested in. So we have things like Zoom. I did buy a couple of courses from this lady named Maria Wench. She seems to be a very, very sharp business coach. So I invested into some of her stuff. Epidemic Sound, that's stuff that you know what I'm saying. The music you hear in the background right now, that's, that's a monthly thing. $18 a month on that. And I spent some money on the thumbnails for this entire month. So the thumbnail that you saw in this video, I didn't make it, but I hired someone to make these amazing thumbnails you've been seeing lately. And I paid a whole month and a whole month worth of thumbnails. It's only $120, but what I'm saying is I don't mind to improve my business, improve my YouTube channel, improve myself and spend extra money in doing so. So if you see numbers starting to go up, I'm gonna make sure that one, my pay has gone up to actually match me moving my budget up, but two, I'm also putting my money into things that are making me more money. It's not just things that I'm just wasting money on and just spending money and splurging and acting a fool. Like I'm actually putting money into things that are making me money. My gym bill didn't end up being as high this month as it usually is. It's usually budgeted for like, I think $420. It, I only spent $337.98 this month. So it was a pretty good month for the gym. Did have to cancel a few private sessions just because our schedules get very busy, me and coach, but it's all good. Insurance, $322.27. Just so you know, that is my life insurance, which is only $150 a month when you add up my whole life and my term and then car insurance as well is added on to that. DoorDash, even though I budgeted for $200, you know what I'm saying? I spent $318.09. That is phenomenally better than $799. So I personally will take that any day, any day, over what the mess I went through uh, last month. I can barely talk, I'm so hot about that mess. <laughs> Restaurants end up being $317.36. My girlfriend and I went to some pretty um, expensive restaurants, you know, where they have all the healthy food at like Grateful Gardens and Perrin and, and things like that, but really didn't go out that much. But I'll tell you what, you can get a lot more going out than getting DoorDash, so. So there's a category, uh, I need to change the name of this, but there's a category called general merchandise, which I spent $247.81 on, and that's just Amazon, and I'll actually click on it. You can't see exactly what I bought, but essentially just supplements. So um, I got vitamin D3, magnesium, I got this supplement called Lung Tonic. It basically helps keep your lungs clear because the weather's changing. My allergies have been acting up and you know what I'm saying? I gotta make sure I stay about healthy and continue to exercise and things like that. And Amazon Prime was also mixed in with all this lovely stuff. Gasoline and fuel. I mean, that's self-explanatory. That's how much money I spent on gas. $218.53. Loans, $211.06. My phone bill is $175. You, you see the list, you know what I'm saying? This right here is the tiny expenses. My utilities were very tiny. It was only $52.16 for last month. I mean, what can I say? For entertainment, it's just Netflix and Peacock, which I don't even use Peacock, so I should probably 
delete it. In this $10, this is Patreon, which I don't use either, so I should probably delete that. But yeah, that is my expense break that I know I talked quite a bit back there, but I had to get some things off my chest. But you know, I also have a savings category, and I wanna go over that real quick because this time around, I did not really intentionally put money into savings. Like, I intentionally put money into other things other than savings, so you know I bought the courses. That's investing, and that's a part of saving. We already went over that. Didn't really spend too much. It was maybe $140 total that I spent on the courses. And I actually got 24 courses and two big spreadsheet templates for a lot of stuff for that money. So it was actually a lot of value I got for very little bit of money. So very, very, very good deal. But outside of that, I put $700 into my Roth IRA and as a disciplinary action, well, a good disciplinary action, I would say, towards myself. I realized I was spending at least $400 more than I should have on DoorDash every month. So I dedicated $400 to my Weeble account. And so, so I bought 1.7 shares of Nvidia and I bought like 0.8 shares of Apple. So I did $200 from one paycheck and then $200 from another paycheck and I put more money in my Weeble account. So now I am in fact investing in my Weeble account again. Now, going forward, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start looking at with that $400, is it gonna always go towards Weeble? Or am I gonna start investing more into my education from a business perspective and continue to gain more skills and grow in that way? We'll see, that's stuff that I gotta figure out with myself pretty much. But anyway, I know this is a little different and um, my energy was a little different in this video. I just have to address some of these things that we have in these comments. Some of y'all get outlandish. Like in my opinion, if I'm the one making videos, right? And I'm the one being transparent, putting myself out there, putting my money out there. I know people can say anything and no, I never like got upset or angry or anything at reading comments, but like it's more coming from a place of the nerve of some people. How are you gonna sit there and criticize me talking about something? Oh, you have life insurance, that's a waste of money, that's stupid. Oh, you're giving money to your mom, you shouldn't be doing that. Oh, why are you donating so much money every month? It's like, look, there's ways you can ask people things and there's ways you can come off disrespectful. So I would just say, if you're gonna ask a question out of curiosity, that's one thing. It, even if you have guidance for me or if you feel like I'm doing something wrong, I am a very receptive person. But if you come at me sideways, like ain't gonna be no reception, it's gonna be backhands. That means I'm gonna be coming at you with that clap back in the comments since y'all wanna be up there acting up. So yeah, like I said, I know my energy might have been a little different in this video and I might have had a different pacing. I actually kind of like the way I did this video, but it's different because I'm going off my phone, I'm going through the app, which I do like a lot, but it's a slightly different format than what I'm used to doing. So you might just be used to a different form of me in my videos. But anytime comments catch me off guard or I feel like somebody's being like going out of their way to be disrespectful, I'm definitely gonna say something about it. Cause it's like, if somebody's gonna put themselves out there and be completely transparent and show you their whole financial picture while simultaneously giving financial advice in the other forms of video, like I feel like the least you can do is show respect. Like, oh man, big respect to you. I actually appreciate you being transparent, but hey, I noticed this. Have you thought about it this way? I would be way more receptive than if you just came at me sideways talking about what I can and can't afford, what I should and shouldn't be doing, how stupid it is to invest in this and blah, 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 blah. I know I have room for improvement. That's the whole reason I make these videos so you can see how far I come. Like this is the very beginning. I know my net worth is in the six figures. I know that I'm doing well right now financially, but this is the beginning. So as I'm teaching, I'm also still learning and I'm extremely passionate about what I do in this personal finance space. And you gotta remember too, I haven't been in this space for that long. So there's gonna be certain terms and certain things that I'm still learning on. There's certain topics of videos that y'all are gonna be talking about in the comments that I haven't made yet that's gonna give me an idea to learn about that thing and then make videos about that thing. Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent. I am very sleep deprived at this moment. So I'm gonna stop recording. I wanna get me some well-deserved sleep after eating, of course. And I will see you in the next video. I actually appreciate you guys a lot and thank you so much for watching and sticking with me. Um, 
I have a lot of fun making these videos. So all comments aside and you know, all that stuff, like I really do appreciate y'all watching my videos and I appreciate making these videos for you and I'm gonna continue to do so and I'm gonna continue to be making products for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you don't have my net worth template or my savings goals template, they are down in the description and they are 100% free. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.